All right, welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the Chupacabra Tutorials channel. I'm your host, Larry, and today we're talking about the system settings inside of your Windows 10 settings. So inside of Windows 10, you have the general systems settings panel called settings, and you access it by either opening your start menu or searching for it in the Windows 10 search. Once it's open, you'll see a panel much like this, and you want to click on the system tab, which just kind of has the icon of a laptop. It says system, and then under that in gray text, it says display, sound, notifications, and power. So if we go ahead and click on that, the first tab is the display tab. This is where you can change and rearrange your displays or your monitors. You can select whichever one you want to make changes to, and then from down here, you've got the ability to enable the nightlight feature. Nightlight kind of gives it like a soft glow, even though it's like a black screen to serve as a nightlight. Then you've got the Windows HD colors, which you can enable depending on your monitor setup. You can use HDR on HDR capable monitors. If you've got one, I would totally recommend trying it. It might uh, kind of like, it might tax your system a little bit and reduce your performance slightly, depending on what you're doing, like games and stuff. But other than that, it makes things look crisp and uh, really nice with really bright, vibrant colors. Down here, you've got the scale where you can make the scale of your screen larger so that everything just looks larger. Your icons, your text, everything. This is really helpful when you have eyesight problems. You can change the resolution of your display if it didn't adequately detect what the display size is. Uh, if if you don't, if you know for a fact yours is smaller or larger than the one that it says is recommended, I would suggest changing it. Otherwise, just leave it at whatever the recommended settings are. And then you can change the layout to be standing, landscape, or flipped inside of the display orientation. And then on multiple displays, you've got the option to extend them duplicate them, show only one display, only on display number two. Uh, I like to use two displays simultaneously, so I just extended my displays into one ultra display. And then down here, you've got the option to connect to wireless displays. In advanced display settings, it just kind of gives you some more information about your monitor, and then you can change the refresh rate. And then down here, you've got some graphic settings, which will help you to change things to be like hardware accelerated GPU scheduling, variable refresh rate. This can be nice if you've got a monitor that could benefit from this. Most of the time, just a solid refresh rate is fine for most monitors. And then you've got some uh, choose an app to set your preferences, desktop app. And then I've also got some information here about my VR dashboard because I got a VR headset plugged in. Next up, we have your sound settings. These are your input and output devices. Your input is like your microphone. Your output is like your headset or your speakers. So for my output, I've got my Logitech G432 gaming headset on, and then I've got my volume, and then I can click on device properties to get more specific with that if I want to enable spatial sound, which is like a surround sound system. Down here, we've also got my input, which is my Blue Yeti microphone, which you can see right here is detecting my voice. And then we can, if we want, select a different one, or we can go into device settings to adjust the volume or the intensity of my microphone. You can rename it something if you want or disable it. And then additional device properties will give you a little panel from your deeper sound settings, which will allow you to listen to the device to make sure it's not malfunctioning, change the level, you can enable certain enhancements like low frequency protection or loudness equalization, which might be handy to keep things at a constant level so when you're whispering, people can still hear you. And then under advanced, you've got like, what kind of settings do you want? And so you can change it to like 32 bit or 24 bit or whatever in all of these different settings. And so we can just back out of here and then down here under advanced options, you can actually control all of the volume mixing so that if you've got like a bunch of programs running at the same time, you can reduce this one, but leave the other ones at max volume instead of having to turn your entire system volume down or logging into one of these programs directly to manually edit their volume. You can just mix that from right here 
Or I've got a little button that you can set up that allows me to just have my volume mixer right here for all of my different programs that are currently open that have sound. So that's all of your primary sound settings. Let's go down to notifications and actions. So down here, you can add, remove, or rearrange your quick actions directly in the action center. So you can go here to edit your quick actions. You can get notifications from apps and other senders. I don't really like random notifications pinging me all day. It's really annoying, so I turn that off. But you can enable what kinds of settings you want to have ping you when things change on your computer, like tips and tricks, ways that you can improve your device and finish setting it up to get the most out of Windows. Show me the Windows welcome experience after updates. You can enable or disable these as you want. Same for certain types of apps being able to send you messages. Again, I prefer not to be pestered, so I just turn all this off. But it's all pretty self-explanatory. Do you want this to send you notifications? Yes or no. Next, we have Focus Assist. This will kind of control whether or not you get notifications from things. So if you find them rather distracting, you can set up specific rules so that you only get pestered during certain times. Otherwise, it leaves you alone to get some work done. Personally, if I, if I feel like if you're going to get pestered by notifications, just disable them. If they're, if they're being a pest, they're always going to be a pest. And you can determine when you get uh, certain things, like choose the times and activities when you don't want to be disturbed, and Focus Assist will turn on automatically. So when you're playing a game, obviously you don't want somebody pinging the crap out of you. When you're on a duplicating my display, don't do it. When I'm using an app in full screen mode, or during specific times that you can set up, don't pester me. So those are all pretty straightforward. Uh, I think this would be a great tool if you find yourself getting distracted a lot. Otherwise, I would just turn notifications off. I find them to be very intrusive and very annoying. Power and sleep. Uh, when plugged in, how long do you want to wait when you're not using your computer before the display turns off? I figure about 15 minutes. If I'm gone longer than 15 minutes, I'm busy. So turn that display off so you're not damaging my monitor. However, I always like to be able to immediately get back to what I'm doing. So don't turn off my computer and put it to sleep because that takes forever to boot back up because I still have some, some regular hard drives. They're not all solid state yet. Storage. This particular system lets you kind of like sense what's available on your computer as far as free space goes. And then it'll help you try to clear up some of that space so that you can delete stuff and free up space. So if you want this feature turned on, enable it and it'll try to help you figure out what files you don't use that you can delete. And then once it's done kind of analyzing your hard drive, you can click on things like these temporary files and it'll try to tell you what all of that stuff is and what you can download. So my download folder is full of a lot of junk that I could get rid of, which I should probably go through. And then I can just click on like Windows update logs. I can delete those thumbnails, optimized files, recycling bin, all these I could remove and then once I've got all these selected, I can click on remove files and it'll automatically delete these to free up some space on my hard drive. Likewise, you can go through like what's on my desktop that I can uh, delete. Oh, look at I've got like 47 gigs of stuff on my desktop. I should view it to delete some stuff. Stuff like that. Very easy to kind of pop through here, figure out what's unnecessary or you forgot to delete before and delete it right through the settings. And then they got some more information down here if you need some other tools to optimize your drives, manage your storage, all that stuff is available right here under storage. Tablets. When you sign in, use the appropriate mode for my hardware. So this just says like when you load into Windows, if I'm running around in tablet mode, this will tell it to just go into tablet mode if I'm not docked. Or if uh, I don't like tablet mode, I can say never use tablet mode or if I love it, and never want to be without it, I could say always use tablet mode. Uh, when I use this device as a tablet, don't switch to tablet mode. Ask me before switching, always switch to tablet mode. I personally think when you're when you're moving around with your computer, it's good to always have the computer ask you if it should go to tablet mode, but this is completely up to you. And then if you click on this, it'll take you to some additional tablet settings, which are all pretty straightforward. You want to hide app icons in the taskbar in tablet mode. You want to automatically hide the taskbar. 
When you're not using tablet mode, make app icons on the taskbar easier to touch. Show the search icon without the search box. Make buttons in the file explorer easier to touch. All this stuff sounds great. I would probably leave most of this on. So after that, we have multitasking. So Windows has these great abilities where you can like drag a program off to the side and then you can lot, like line two of them up next to each other, which is great for reading one document and typing in the other window. Uh, so this is, do you want to enable snap on windows? And I, I love that actually. It lets you just kind of pull stuff to the top of the of the bar to make it full screen. And that enable, allows you to, when I snap a window, automatically size it to fill the available space. When I snap a window, show what I can snap next to it. So this would be, if you moved your thing over here, then it would ask you what program you wanted to put on the other side. And then when I resize a snapped window, simultaneously resize any adjacent snapped window. So yeah, I like all these. Leave these on. Timeline. Show suggestions in your timeline. I think that's like what happens when you open your notification tray. But these are all pretty straightforward. Um, do you want to alt plus tab? Pressing alt tab shows open windows and five more recent tabs in edge. Virtual desktops. Uh, virtual desktop allows you to have more than one desktop that you can hot swap between like you're simultaneously logged into more than one account and this is how you can kind of control some of those settings on the taskbar show windows that are uh, that are open on only the desktop i'm using or all desktops pressing alt tab shows windows that are open on only the one i'm using or all desktops this would make more sense if you use virtual desktop so if you don't use those ignore that Projecting this PC. If you want to use this to project your Windows phone or PC to the to your screen and then use your computer controls to type stuff out and do stuff on your computer, that's what these controls are for. Pretty straightforward. Do you want to have some Windows and Android devices can project to this PC when in, when you say it's okay, always, or whatever these options say when they're available? Again, pretty straightforward. Do you want these features? Do you not want these features? Check the pull-down windows if they're available, see which one you prefer, move on from there. Shared experiences. Shared experiences use all system accounts to authorize actions across devices. All accounts are working correctly. So this is the place where you would see things like if you're logged into like OneDrive or stuff like that, and then it would kind of be the settings to coordinate moving files between computers, between your computer and your Xbox, computer and your phone, stuff like that. So you can enable nearby sharing to share over Bluetooth and Wi-Fi with devices with your accounts logged into them. And then they'll receive content from everyone nearby or my devices only. I'd probably sit, switch this to my devices only just because I don't trust random people. Uh, save the files that you get to where you can specify here. If you have that enabled, it's just defaulted to my download folder. Share across devices. Let other devices, including linked phones and tablets, open and message apps on this device. You can turn that on. It works the same way, just for messaging, stuff like that. Clipboard. Do you want to be able to use your clipboard history and sync it across various devices? That's what this is. You can turn it off, you can turn it on. Uh, you can get started on managing the sync across devices feature for your clipboard, or you can clear your clipboard data in case it's full of junk and you need to clear it. Remote desktop. Do you want to be able to log into this desktop remotely? Yes or no? About. And then this last tab down here is just the about information on your computer. It is full of some personal information that might be used to uh, mess with my computer, so I'm not going to click on that. But it's just a rundown of like your computer's ID numbers, uh, other information about your computer specifically, your system, what version you're running, if you've got a valid key. All that sort of stuff is available in the about section. Not really any settings to go over, it's just information. So that, in a nutshell, is looking at the various settings in the system tab inside of Windows settings. I hope you found this helpful. I've been your host, Larry. If you have any questions or you want more information about any of this, go ahead and throw those questions in the comments section below. I always try to help as best as I can. Sometimes I don't know. Uh, and otherwise, if you need more help than that, we have a Discord server. You can find the link in the description of every one of my videos. You can pop in, ask questions. We got hangouts, games, news, bots that let you play games like Pokemon and stuff. Come on in, hang out. So that'll be it for this one, ladies and gentlemen. 
Don't forget to like and subscribe, and I will catch you next time. Bye, everybody, and have a good one.